gender and the women empowerment issue. Uh, starting in 2011, there's been a lot of uh, ideas out there how to have uh, women-owned businesses and how to have women uh, SMEs be uh, more participating in APEC. And there have been a, a few exciting initiatives uh, where some of the big multinationals have actually come up with targets uh, uh, to, to say, okay, right now 10% uh, of my procurement is from women-owned businesses, but in five years it's going to be 25%. And then they've uh, uh, coordinated with uh, women uh, empowerment groups in each country uh, to, to make this happen. Well, I think for uh, the, the gender issue, we have found uh, that uh, the APEC Women Economy Summit in 2011, I think, was quite a breakthrough. We have to thank Secretary Clinton at the time for that. Because after that, uh, in, in each uh, part of uh, the region, we started doing similar studies to, to understand what were the obstacles faced by women. And I think, uh, at least in Indonesia, because we have used that framework very effectively. Some companies, a lot, number of companies have already changed their policies. So I think it's important to, uh, to continue that. And then, the, then there's the slice with the women-owned businesses, which would include the procurement and, and you know, getting uh, linked to the market. And then, we, and then we have, what we haven't talked about is the financing part of it. You know, how to get uh, microfinancing, financing, uh, be more uh, gender focused. And a number of banks actually now have uh, programs which are just giving loans to women. Uh, and I think as, as a woman leader, uh, you, you have to be sensitive to, you know, whether it's a culture issue or whether it's, it's a regulatory issue. Uh, and uh, just be be sensitive to it and be able to adapt to it, but uh, not give up. Uh, you, you should never give up. You should always continue to to fight and and try to to uh, impress upon people uh, the importance uh, of certain things. And I think uh, being women.